the next topic is choke capacitor filtering so as we all know that uh, there are different types of uh, filtering circuits among those filtering circuits uh, usage usage of uh, inductor is also one of the type of filters we are having in the last class we have discussed about uh, the filtering of the output of the rectifier using a capacitor just by using a capacitor that was a capacitor filter so here choke capacitor filter means along with that capacitor filter you are going to use an inductor inductor means the coil so inductor so inductor along with the capacitor is going to filter the unwanted ripples so that such kind of circuits which are added up to the rectifier circuit are known as choke capacitor filters this process of filtering out the signal using the inductor and capacitor that is inductor is usually represented by l and capacitor by c so we also call it as lc filtering we also call it as lc filtering and also this is also called as l section filter so these are the different names we are having lc filter l section filter choke capacitor filter three names are there so to confuse you in the exam they can ask it in any of these uh, names so you should know the different names of it so take the inductor this is the inductor we have a capacitor we have a resistor this is the inductor so this is when we are going to pass it only through capacitor when we this is the output what we get when we pass it through both inductor and capacitor this is the output of the full way rectifier without the capacitor okay so what we are going to do is we are going to connect this to the full way rectifier output not only the full way rectifier i have taken an example of full way rectifier even you can connect it to half way rectifier bridge rectifier 
anywhere you can connect so simple the connection is simple uh, you need to connect this part across the load wherever you connect the load no rl so across that you need to connect this particular circuit so when you connect this circuit during that time we are going to get almost a smooth straight line come almost not a complete smooth line almost a smooth line because when uh, when we are just passing it through the capacitor still there was ripples but when you are going to use an inductor along with the capacitor then we are going to get uh, somewhat uh, reduced ripple why we are going to get this reduced ripple let me see now so you don't have any derivations for this so here uh, in the choke capacitor filter so inductor is made uh, to keep the the current constant so while the capacitor will be used to maintain the output voltage constant so because in the uh, the current is made constant by the inductor and the voltage is tried to be made constant by the capacitor because the capacitor is going to charge discharge so that charging and discharging process uh, we have understood in the last uh, explain uh, last concept so because of that because uh, rl is connected across the capacitor so whatever the voltage we have across the capacitor that voltage we will be able to get across the load resistance so the series inductor and capac capacitor they are going to form an voltage divider so voltage divider circuit means say at when you are having inductor and capacitor between this between this we are taking the output between the inductor and capacitor we are taking the output see whenever you are going to take let us take simple example you are going to have a circuit like this and you have some uh, connection plus volt and you are taking the output here you are taking the output here let us take this one is r1 this one is r2 so now in this so in this r1 r2 what happens is the voltage across this particular point will be maintained constant this kind of circuit is known as the voltage divider circuit yes this kind of circuit is known as voltage divider circuit stem Yeah. yeah, please come. Just a minute. yeah so uh, this is the voltage divider uh, circuit 
we are uh, having. So the main idea in the voltage divided circuit is between uh, whenever you take the voltage in between, so that voltage is going to be maintained constant because of these two resistors. The same concept is applied here because the inductor is having reactance and the capacitor is having its own reactance again. So this inductor will be having, sorry, inductor will be having its inductance, capacitor will be having its reactance. So because that inductance and reactance will be acting as a resistor and because of that the voltage will be maintained constant. So that is what uh, the voltage divider circuit application here. So after this, the AC component ripples, uh, the, the AC component ripples, that means which are coming from the full wire rectifier is applied. So when you are going to apply between these two ends, during that time, the inductor is going to have, offer very high impedance. Impedance is also, it is uh, like an opposition resistance only, but uh, we cannot directly call it as a, re a resistance. Uh, it is a form of opposition which is formed by the coils. High impedance offers a high impedance and capacitor offers low impedance because can I know why the capacitor offers a low impedance for the AC signal? Anybody? Why the capacitor offers low impedance? It allows to yeah, to good. So because the capacitor allows the AC signal to pass through it. That's why it is known as, uh, it is uh, said to be offering low impedance. So, because of this, see what happens is inductor offers high impedance and capacitor offers low impedance. So, because of this what happens is uh, the choke opposes, that is uh, the inductor opposes the change in the value of the current flowing through it. Because whatever the fluctuation happens, that happens because of the change in the current. So, the inductor is going to oppose the changes in the values of the current. Meanwhile, the voltage across the capacitor will be maintained constant because it is going to, it is going to avoid, it is going to avoid fluctuations in current. It is going to avoid the fluctuations situations in voltage. So this is going to avoid that fluctuation means it is going to remove the or minimize that ripples uh, in the current. So here this capacitor uses the same current and it starts charging and it will charge to the peak value and after that it discharges. It is going to charge to the peak value by using because capacitor can charge by using current only. You know? so, it is going to utilize the DC components to charge itself, whereas the AC components will go to the ground. So here already some amount of AC components are filtered out. But even after that, we have some amount of uh, the AC component which are still present that will pass through this capacitor and it will go to the ground. The remaining DC components are going to be used for charging this capacitor. So when this capacitor is going to charge to the peak value, after that, uh, when the uh, the full wire rectifier uh, output becomes less, during that time again, when what happens, the voltage across this junction will become less. When this voltage becomes less, automatically capacitor starts discharging. So because of the discharge, we will be having, slowly it will be discharging, by the time next cycle will come, again the capacitor will charge, discharge, this process will continue. 
just remember inductor is going to offer high impedance for the current whereas the capacitor is going to offer low impedance for the ac component or ac so here the inductor is going to remove the fluctuations on the fluctuations of the which are present in the current whereas the capacitor is going to utilize the dc component present in that uh, the current which is coming and it is going to charge to the peak value and the remaining ac current will be going to the ground but still we cannot tell it is 100% uh, uh, dc line i mean 100% uh, pure dc output we are getting but somewhat compared to earlier cases it is somewhat less that is ripples are less okay so that is about this choke capacitor filtering so after this uh, we are having some uh, problems so we are having some uh, the problems we are having so we can solve those problems okay uh, see for uh, whenever you take uh, this uh, inductors and uh, capacitors i'm sorry the transformer we'll be taking the uh, ratios of the voltages and ratio of the ratio of the voltage and the ratio of the number of turns so n1 n2 the number of turns and uh, the voltage will be considered so we uh, so if you if i write v1 v2 and this is the transformer this is the transformer we are having so this becomes v1 this becomes v2 so one is the input primary voltage and this is the secondary voltage this is the primary voltage this is the secondary voltage we are having so that kind of uh, problems will also be asked so if uh, they are asking you in the exam uh, to find vm to find vm what you are going to do what is the formula for vm this is your primary voltage secondary voltage now they are asking to find peak voltage what will be your formula hmm what is it the formula Hmm? No one knows. What is this V two known as? I'll give you options: VRMS, VDC. Among these two, what is this V two? What is the secondary voltage? I have told. Whether it is VDC or VRMS. VRMS sir. Uh, VRMS. So when you know VRMS, V2 is equal to VRMS. So I want VM. That what will be your VM?
Just recall the formula. What is the VRMS formula we are having for follow rectifier? Vm by root 2. Ah, VRMS is equal to Vm by root 2. So now I want Vm means what you will do? I have given you VRMS. So root 2 into VM. Yeah. That's it. Vm is equal to root 2 into VRMS. Okay. Now, let us take one problem. So, uh, uh, I have given uh, half a rectifier, but let me take uh, full way rectifier. So, uh, for, for a full way rectifier, full way rectifier is fed with 230 volts and its ripple factor is less than 0 0.00, let us take 6. So they are asking what is the value of capacitor, estimate the value of capacitor and they are given IL is equal to 0.5 amperes and uh, turns ratio. So turns ratio I will give it as 5. Okay, so now V2 by V1 is equal to N2 by N1. Formula we know. We have the ratio between the ratio of the voltage between uh, to the ratio of the turns ratio. N2 is the number of turns of the coil in the secondary of the transformer. N1 is the number of turns of the coil in the primary of the transformer. So now V2 is the primary one. So we don't know what is V2. We'll retain it as, as it is. V1 is 230 volts. And N2 by N1, they are given. So they are uh, telling the turns ratio is 5. So, uh, so whenever turns ratio is considered, it is taken as N1 by N2. This is the turns ratio. N1 by N2 is 5 means, what is the value? N1 by N2 is equal to 5 means whether this 5 belongs to 5 or N1 or it belongs to N2. N1, sir. N1, right. So nothing is there means 1. So it is N1 is to N2 that is equal to 5 is to 1. So we will take it as 1 by 5. So V2 is equal to 230 by 5. So, how much you'll get? Use your calculator. I can easily do it. Huh? 46. Hmm, 46. So, 46 volt we are getting. What is this V2 actually? Secondary voltage. Secondary voltage. Secondary voltage, but whether it is V2, uh, VDC, VM, VRMS? VRMS. VRMS. Okay. Now, we have the uh, form, a formula. So, for uh, ripple factor, formula is 1 by 4 root 3. F into C into RL. This is the ripple factor formula for full wave rectifier. So here in the full wave rectifier, we know that F is a standard value. What is F in India? What is the standard frequency of current? 50, sir. 50. So it is standard value, we know 50 hertz. And ripple value they are given. That is also fine. We need to find C. 
but we don't know what is rl but they have given il so across rl what you are getting you are getting some voltage no what is the to whether the voltage is a dc or uh, ac dc sir dc so here i should use vdc only vdc so we don't know vdc so what we have to do we should first find out vdc so vrms is equal to 46 volt we have got then use uh, to find uh, uh, vdc so what is the formula 2 vm by pi is the formula we are having so first what you have to do you have to first find out vm so vrms into root 2 will give you vm so tell me what is vm root 2 into 46 0.05 how much 65.05 uh? is it 65 yes, sir, 65 65 65.04 65. okay 65.04 volt now you substitute here you'll get 2 into 65.04 by pi that gives you vdc so 41.26 hmm 41.426 okay 41.426 volt okay now you use your 41.42 divided by 0.5 hmm. how much you'll get so 8.28 8.28 kilo kilo or just ohm kilo ohm, ohm. only ohm hmm 8 point or 82 point 82 point ah uh, 82.8 okay 82.8 ohm we got now here we got ripple factor they have told it should be lesser than or equal to 0.006 okay is the ripple value so rearrange the equation 1 divided by 4 root 3 into f into r into capital rl now substitute everything and tell me the answer substitute f is 50 hertz r is 0.06 rl is 80, as a mod 
so uh, is it uh, do you have any further numbers coming Sir, 0 0.0581, sir. 0 0.0? 0 0.0581. 0 0.0581. Okay. So, if I am going to write it in terms of micro, how what will be the value? Micro means 10 to the power of minus 6. I need to shift backwards. Minus means I should shift it backwards. It becomes 5,810 micro. What is the unit for capacitor? Yeah, farad. Micro farad. So if you use 5,810 micro farad capacitor, then you can achieve a ripple factor of this much. This is the meaning. Okay. Next, a bridge type full wave rectifier uses four diodes in transformer of 230 volts. Uh, in the uh, textbook, it is 55th page number. Four diodes and transformer ratio 230 volts is to so I'll take it as 140 volt. A bridge type full wave rectifier uses four diodes and transformer of ratio 230 volt is to 140 volt. The forward resistance of diode is 25 ohm. So forward resistance of the diode and reverse resistance is infinity and the load resistance is equal to uh, I'll give you 400 ohm find first one maximum value of the current through the RL what do you mean by maximum value Peak value. Peak value is always the maximum value. So I am in it to find DC value of the current IDC. After that, DC value of the voltage VDC. Then PIV, peak inverse voltage. Uh, in the textbook, uh, there is one correction, page number 55, 2.17, uh, PIV is taken as 2 VM, it is not 2 VM, it is just VM, just scratch that, you have 2 VM, since it is a bridge rectifier, it is 2 into 155 something you are got, no, just scratch this, it is 155.56, this is the answer. Okay, so there is a type being error. Coming back to this, uh, they have given this ratio. What does this ratio indicate? V1, V2. This is your primary, this is your secondary voltage. And forward resistance is this one, RF. And this is the reverse resistance. So, 
V2 is your VRMS. So if I want an equation for Vm, I can write it as Vm is equal to root 2 into VRMS or you can write V2. So root 2 into 140. What is the answer? How much? One ninety seven point nine eight. Okay. Uh, now we need to we can find IM. So IM is equal to VM by 2RF plus RL. So here we will not just consider uh, the RF, we will be considering the extra forward resistance also. Yeah, tell me what is the value? 430 milliamps. 430 milliamps. Okay. IDC. IDC is equal to 270 IM by pi. Is yes. 273.8. 273.8 milliamps. Okay, then VDC, VDC is equal to 2 Vm by pi. So 126. 120. 126.10. Okay. After this, we have PIV. PIV is nothing but VM for uh, British rectifier. So that's what I told you to correct in the book. It is just VM for British rectifier. So whatever we have got VM, just substitute that VM here. That is the chapter. Next problem, uh, example number 2.20, uh, page number 56. Calculate the ripple voltage of a full wave rectifier with 120 microfarad. That problem. So I'll be giving capacitor value as 140 microfarad is connected to the load and current of 50 milliamps. Frequency is 50 hertz given and uh, yeah uh, peak value of the rectified wave is given 60 volt and they are asking to find out the ripple value
so this uh, 50 milliamperes means they are telling about the idc so we have ripple is equal to vrms by vdc because uh, vrms is nothing but our uh, ac voltage or the ripple voltage whatever we are getting at the output side so we have this formula but we don't know what is ripple so that's why we have one more formula for uh, ripple that is 1 divided by 4 root 3 f into c into rl where uh, we have uh, Yeah, even RL is not given. So now we have to equate these two. So how we can do is VRMS shift this here. We get VDC divided by 4 root 3 F into C into RL. If I combine these two, what I'll get? VDC by RL is what? IDC. IDC. So we get IDC by 4 root 3 f into c so idc is given substitute it 50 into 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by 4 root 3 into 50 into uh, 140 into 10 to the power of minus 6 How much will get? This fifty, this fifty will get cancelled. Sir, one, sir. One. Okay. So VRMS is equal to 1 volt. Now come back here and substitute. R is equal to 1 divided by VDC. So what is the value of uh, uh, VDC? We can, you now we can calculate no, VDC value. VDC is equal to IDC into RL. So first find out VDC. So what is ripple? Point zero 
Okay. So if I write it in terms of percentage, it will be getting 1.6 percent. 1.6. Ripple. But still, problem is not over. We have just found out the ripple. Still, they have asked other two things. First, they are asking ripple voltage of the full wave rectifier. Ripple voltage means the yeah, VRMS we found. Now that is done. VRMS is equal to 1 volt. That is fine. Found. And uh, in the second one, if the peak voltage of the uh, rectified is 60 volt, calculate DC voltage. That also we did. And okay, everything that is done. And suppose sometimes uh, if they are asking you, uh, find the ripple peak to peak. Ripple peak to peak means VR peak to peak is equal to 2 root 3 into VRMS. This equation we have come across in the derivation part. So you should use this formula. So uh, simply I have given in the problem the textbook, but uh, if they ask, you can get 